Peter Walker here and welcome to today's edition of the Transition Guide. Now joining me again in the studio is John Wawalow. Welcome, John. Thanks, Peter. Good to be with you. Great. Now, in today's episode, I really want to look at the the second book that you kind of, that you're well known for and The Automatic Customer. Because at the time when you released that book, I would say the book was well ahead of its time. What prompted <laughs> you? And if you look at it, it was just after you released that book, that whole automatic customer concept seemed to be springing up everywhere. Well, it's it's good of you to say that. I, I don't know how uh, prescient I was or clairvoyant, but yeah, look, when when you mentioned on our last show together, the value builder system where we have eight kind of factors that drive the value of your company. Things like how dependent the business is on you, how fast it's growing, how dependent you are on a single customer. But one of the most important drivers to the value of your company is recurring revenue. Recurring revenue being that sort of automatic subscription-based or contractually obligated revenue that comes in without you having to resell the customer. And, you know, I talk to business owners about recurring revenue. I generally get a bit of a a squared eyed look and a bit of a furrow brow saying, yeah, but I'm not a software company. Like I, you know, I'm a manufacturing business or a distribution company or a retail high, you know, high street retailer. And, and, and so this doesn't apply to me. And so what I wanted to do with the book is, is really um, debunk that myth and say that no matter what industry you're in, a retailer or distribution company, uh, whatever, you can create some recurring revenue. And, and that was what we tried to do in the book. There were nine different subscription models that I think you can apply to but just about any business and it will jack up the value of your company. I think what you said there is really, really important that you can generate some recurring revenue. I think a lot of the kickback is that they think that they have to pivot. Oh, do I hate that word? They have to switch <laughs> from actually doing what they're doing now and actually go 100% all into a totally subscription-based model. Well, that's not the case, is it? It is not. And so let me give you an example of someone who, who I interviewed for the book. Guy's name is Jim Vagonis. He has a company called Hassle-Free Homes. Now, Jim is a contractor, right? I, I'm not sure what they call them in the UK, but you, you'd, you'd hire them to, to fix your patio or your furnace, uh, people who, who you know, drive trucks and, and work on, on, the home, on people's homes. And he was sort of frustrated with the, the, the sort of ebb and flow of work, the, the roller coaster of cash flow. And so he decided to think about creating a subscription model. He decided to call it hassle-free homes because he wanted to help people who own a home relax in their home. So instead of the classic sort of honeydew list that you get on a Sunday or a, or a, or a Friday night and, and it ruins your weekend because you've got to do all the projects, he would say, look, well, I want my customers to really get home to their home, their castle, and just take their shoes off and, and enjoy their home. And so he managed the home. So he changed out the furnace filter. He changed the, you know, the swimming pool uh, filters. He, he did the light bulbs. He did everything so that when you got home on a Friday evening, your home was a palace and you didn't have any projects to do. And he charged on a monthly basis for this. So this was a great business model. And when I asked him about it, you know, like, what did you do with the other you know, business that you had? Did you, you know, did you go all in? And he said, no, 50% of my revenue comes from my subscribers to hassle-free homes who asked me to do other projects. Because I'm in their home once a month, changing the light bulb, fixing the furnace, they asked me, oh, Jim, you know, I've got a bit of a leak in the roof. Can you replace the roof or can you, you know, build me out a new deck, whatever? 50% of his revenue was coming from non-subscribers. If we look at Amazon, Prime in the UK and the, and the US, it's, it's very similar. You know, once people subscribe to Prime, it makes them much more likely to buy other things from Amazon. So the typical Amazon customer, last time I looked at it, they were spending about $500 a year with Amazon. It's probably gone up in the pandemic now. Typical Prime subscriber was spending three times more, more than $1,500 a year with Prime with Amazon. And, and so once we subscribe to your point, it doesn't have to be 100% of your revenue, but even if it's 10% of your revenue, once they are a subscriber, it makes them infinitely more likely to buy more from you because of this thing called the Trojan horse effect, which I just described. And like you just talked about Amazon with the subscri- with the prime, they've now extended it. So if you're using Amazon pantry, for an example, 
they'll say, okay, do you want to put this onto a subscription so you're getting this stuff delivered regularly? And before you look at it, you're living in a life of subscription. I mean, in fact, the way that we consume content now is all subscription based. Look at Netflix subscription, yep. Disney Plus subscription. Yeah, and for the average small business, here's the, I mean, here's the good news and the bad news. I, the good news is this is a business model that you can adopt to dramatically improve the value of your company. I mean, recurring revenue, it's not uncommon. Uh, if you look at, I'll give you an example, security businesses uh, have two forms of revenue, right? They've got installation revenue where, the, where they install the security system, and then they've got recurring revenue, which is called monitoring, where they send the fire brigade if you have a fire or whatever. In a business like that, they'll pay about 75 cents for every dollar of one-off installation revenue and about $2 for every dollar of recurring revenue. Said another way, your recurring revenue is like three times more valuable dollar for dollar than your one-off revenue in the security business. And it's the same in virtually every industry. That's the good news. The bad news is Amazon is coming for you. If <laughs> you are a business, right? It, it, obviously, if you're a high street retailer, you don't need me to tell you that, but you obviously feel it every day. Equally, if you're in a distribution company or a warehousing company, and virtually any business is being disrupted by Amazon, and the pandemic has just accelerated that. And so the, the idea of being the local provider has just about been eliminated. That is a differentiating point of, uh, of value for your customer saying, yeah, but we're the local provider of X, Y, or Z product or service has virtually disappeared. And so you've got to find another, uh, another way to differentiate yourself. And I'll give an example of someone who did this. So there's a company um, out there that got in the business of selling flowers. So if you think about a high street flower store, right, it's, it's a, it's a crappy business model in a lot of ways, right? You, you, you cut the flower off the stem and the farmer cuts it and it starts to die. It shows up in your refrigerator a couple of weeks later and within six weeks, it's dead. You can't sell it. Typical flower store in America. I'm not sure what it's like in the UK, Peter, but in, in, in America's typical flower store will throw out garbage more than half of its inventory every single yeah. month just because they buy the wrong you know, kind of flowers. Seasonal, right? Mother's Day and Valentine's Day is when everybody buys flowers. The rest of the year, we don't buy as many flowers. And so very seasonal, you know, uh, product that, that sort of, uh, that, that has a shelf life. So these guys come along, Son Yu Panda and Brian Burkhardt come along and say, okay, we're going to, we're going to rethink the business of selling flowers. And they said, who buys flowers regularly? And they looked at all the people who buy flowers, Mother's Day, Valentine's Day, graduation, whatever. And they realized that, that very high end hotels, buy flowers. And so what they did is they bundled a subscription to flowers mm. for hotels. They said, look, we, we'll, we're going to drop off the flowers for you every two weeks. We'll get rid of the old ones. So you always have fresh cut flowers, but you never have to worry about having fresh cut flowers. And they built an, a, a wonderful business. And so they've taken what is a high street, classic retail model, flower selling, and built a subscription-based company. And so look, I think you can apply if you think creatively enough about virtually just about any industry, you can apply some form of recurring revenue model. Yeah, and I've seen that recently with dog food. So there's a company in the UK called Tails.com, yep. and they've done an awesome job where they personalize it to your actual dog. They get the weight and everything each month. They alter it based on usage, and they've got it right. They've got you used to buying dog food on subscription. And you know how much people love their pets. Peter, are you, yes. Here, here's my question for you. Are you, do you own a, do you own a pet? Absolutely. Do you have a pet? Yeah. Yes, I do. What do you have? Dog. So are you a dog owner or a dog parent? It'll be a dog parent. There you go. So Matt Meeker built a company called BarkBox, which is a subscription-based uh, company that sends you new dog food, dog, dog treats, and stuff like that. And he defined his target customer as not dog owners, but dog parents. The That's difference superb. being, the do yeah, the difference, of course, being dog parents treat their dogs as children. They're not going down to the high street and buying the, the cheap dog food off the supermarket shelf. No, no, not that. You know, you've got to have the vegan special salmon, either the lamb chops, ground down and some vegan. Like, I mean, that's, that's what a dog parent does, right? They care for their dog so much that they wouldn't 
you know, wouldn't mind spending for very high quality dog food sent to them on a regular cadence. Perfect. And so that's actually one of the secrets, because I think one of the things we should, we should riff on a bit, Peter, is like, if people want to, if, if you want to take the next step, and they actually want to, to think about how they would create some recurring revenue, w- what is the first step? And, and I think the first step is, is exactly what Sonia Panda did at, uh, at, at H. Bloom, the flower company that sells on subscription. It's exactly what Matt Meeker did at BarkBox. You need to niche down and segment your customers based on their buying triggers. Like what causes them to buy from you? Because the biggest mistake we see is that people try to create a, a recurring revenue model for all of their customers. And it's never going to work. It's a recipe for diluting your subscription model down to basically milk toast, nothing. What you've really got to do is segment your customers and identify the buying triggers and buying behavior of each segment. And in Matt Meeker's case, he identified dog parents are different than dog owners. In H. Bloom's case, they identified hotels are different than people who buy for Valentine's Day. And that's what enabled them to sort of envision their subscription model. Oh, that's awesome. And actually, we could carry on having different examples and we could just go on and on and on. If people really want to start thinking about their business differently and they want to start looking at the subscription model in more detail for their business, what do you reckon? Apart from reading your book, The Automatic Customer, absolutely. What else should they be doing? Yeah, again, I think the very first step is identifying your target customers and understanding what their buying triggers are, what their buying behavior, the reason they buy from you. And then once you've done that, the next step is to look at their buying cadence. So some people buy once a year and they're perfectly happy doing that. Unlike dog parents who want dog food sent to them every every two weeks. And so once you've identified your customer segments, the second step in the process is looking at the, the purchase cadence of those segments. And that's obviously where you're recurring revenue model will be revealed where you see a regular buying cadence from a subset of your customers. Now, if they want any more information, do you have any more information on this on your website? Yeah, you know, just go to builttosell.com, top right-hand corner, you'll see the words free gift. If you click on that, you opt in and you'll get the nine subscription model white paper. You'll get a chapter of the book, eight videos, one of which is all dedicated to recurring revenue. So get built to sell.com and then just click on the free gift button. Well, thank you so much for your time today, John. It's been absolutely brilliant. For those of you that have any more information, want any more information, got any questions, head over to bulka.com and get in touch. John and I will be doing a webinar in the near future. So if you've got any questions on anything that we've covered today and you want him to cover it in the webinar, send me an email and I'll make sure it's included in an up and coming webinar. And most importantly, remember, failing to learn is learning to fail. Please stay safe. Thank you.